When Kevin Whitaker's body was first discovered on November 18th, 1994, police had assumed he'd died of an overdose and that his friends had simply dumped him by the roadside near some rubbish bags. But later on, the real truth of what happened to Kevin Whitaker on November 17th came out a few years later. At first, Craig Rolfe denied all knowledge of knowing Kevin but was later confronted with some itemised phone records. Craig made a statement about Kevin, which was also read out in court. Craig and Tony went into the hospital where Pat Tate was laid after being shot by Steve Nipper Ellis in the bungalow which he shared with the mother of his child, boasting about what went on that evening on November the 17th. The following is the statement of Craig Anthony Rolfe from the 1st of the 12th, 1994. About five years ago, whilst at my friend's Robert Emmons flat, I met a man by the name of Kevin Whitaker. Over the years, I have got to know Kevin fairly well. Having said that, we're not particularly close, although I've done him a few favours in the past. We have only gone out socially together on one occasion. On an average, I would see him two to three times a month. The last time I saw Kevin was on Tuesday the 15th, 94, around mid-afternoon, when I saw him standing in a telephone kiosk in Retchery Road, Pitsy, making a telephone call. I stopped the car I was driving, a blue Vauxhall Corsa, and had a conversation for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. I then drove off and left him to walk to Simon Smith's house. The last time I saw Kevin was on Tuesday the 15th, around mid-afternoon, when I saw him standing in a telephone kiosk in Retchery Road, Pitsy, making a telephone call. I stopped the car I was driving, a blue Vauxhall Corsa, and had a conversation for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. I then drove off and left him to walk to Simon Smith's house. The last time I spoke to Kevin was sometime between 1500 and 1400 hours on Thursday the 17th when I phoned him from my home address to his father's address. This conversation lasted approximately 5 minutes and all I can recall was the conversation that he mentioned he had been to see his little boy in the morning. During all these conversations, at no time did Kevin mention he was worried about anything or that he had any problems other than the fact he was a bit down having split with his girlfriend. After I had finished the conversation, I stayed at home watching the television while my girlfriend Donna Jaggers went to Lakeside Shopping Centre. Donna returned home approximately 6 o'clock the same day and we had our evening meal together. Having finished our meal, Donna and myself then left our home address and drove to Basildon in the blue Vauxhall Corsa, arriving there about 7 o'clock that evening at our friend's house. This is the home address of Stephen Thomas and his girlfriend Michelle. Unfortunately, by the time we had arrived, Michelle had gone out to aerobic class, so we stayed only a short time whilst arriving home at approximately 9 to 9.30 hours that evening. We watched television for a short while and went to bed for the night. I then didn't leave the house till around midday on Friday the 18th when I left my house to drive to Basildon to see friends. So there we have Craig Rolf denying all knowledge of what went on with Kevin Whitaker. But then in February of 1996, less than two months after the murders of Pat Tate, Tony Tucker and Craig Rolf, the mother of Pat Tate came out with an article in the Sun newspaper which said not only that Craig and Tony had gone into the hospital admitting to the murders to Pat, but it was also the reasons why they were murdered. The headline, My son and his ecstasy mates were massacred in revenge for poison jab murder from the 7th of February 1996 by Ian Hepburn of the Sun newspaper. Three ecstasy barons were executed to avenge the horrific murder of a rival drug gang member, it was claimed yesterday. Two of the shot villains, Craig Rolfe and Tony Tucker, are thought to have killed cannabis dealer Kevin Whitaker, 27, by injecting a lethal cocktail of drugs into his groin. In return, Whitaker's pals wiped them out on a snowy farm track, along with their henchman, Pat Tate, it is believed. The bodies of the three sparked a murder riddle when they were found in Rolfe's Range Rover outside Retted and Essex in December. But yesterday, an explanation was provided by Pat Tate's mother, Marie, 58. She revealed that before her son was slaughtered, he had told her how Rolf and Tucker ambushed Whitaker and killed him with a poison jab. 
First, they paralyzed him by forcing him to snort a substance called ketamine. It is used to numb horses before castration. It is known in the underworld as Special K. Then, as helpless Whitaker's muscles froze, the laughing gangsters pierced his groin with a syringe and pumped a deadly concoction into his blood. After he died, they dumped his body in a ditch near Basildon. Marie told how Whitaker, the father of a baby boy, was working for a rival gang in Romford. She said Rolf snatched a bag containing £60,000 worth of cannabis from him before he was killed. And she added, I am firmly convinced the rival gang decided to get even with Rolf and Tucker over Kevin's death and the theft of the cannabis. She insisted her son had nothing to do with Whitaker's murder and he was only killed on the found track because he tried to protect Tucker, a drug trade Mr Big, whose dealers included the one who sold an ecstasy tablet to tragic teenager Leah Betts. Although an open verdict was recorded at Whitaker's interest, the results of the Sun investigation back Maria's story. And police believe her account of the initial murder is probably close to the mark. Maria said Tate blurted out the truth about Whitaker's grisly end when she visited him in a Basildon hospital hours after the killing on November 17th, 1994. Tate, 37, was recovering after being shot in a failed assassination attempt. And unknown to his mother, he had hidden a gun in his bed to protect himself. He was also high on drugs smuggled into the hospital, which Maria said obviously loosened his tongue. Bodybuilder Tate told how Rolf, 26, and 38-year-old Tucker, one-time minder of boxing champ Nigel Benn, gloated over Whitaker's death during a visit to his bedside. Maria said they told him with relish what they had done. Rolf laughed because he thought he'd got away with murder. Then Tate, who served time for armed robbery, went on to describe Whitaker's fate in chilling detail. Maria said Kevin was forced to snort a substance named Special K. He was numb from head to toe, but his brain and his mouth were still functioning. He was bundled into a cream-coloured BMW, unable to defend himself. They pulled down his trousers, and all he could do was look at them, pitfully, plead with them not to hurt him, and ask what they were going to do. They laughed in his face and inject him in the groin with a deadly mixture of drugs. Then they drove to a parking spot down a country lane and dumped his body in a ditch. The mother added, I was horrified at the time and too frightened to talk. But now my son is dead and I want everyone to know what evil people are out there. Rolf, Tate and Tucker are thought to have been lured to their deaths by the promise of a drugs deal. Police believe their killer, who finished them off with rapid fire from a pump action shotgun, travelled with them in the back of the Range Rover. Maria said, Pat, Tucker and Rolf were all big men pumped with steroids. My son never went out anywhere without his mobile phone in his hand and his gun in his inside pocket. It took a brave and very clever man to ride in that car with them and kill them before they had a chance to make a move. He is very capable of killing again. The assassin has not been caught. Police remain unconvinced the hit was motivated by revenge and believe it was an inside job carried out by a double-crossing member of the victim's own gang. But a sun probe has uncovered starting links between Whitaker and Rolf, and we have learned that huge amounts of dangerous drugs were found in Whitaker's body. Our probe revealed he was he acted as a go-between in the cannabis deals, and an itemized phone bill shows he called Craig's mobile from his father's home four times in the hours before he died. A message asking him to contact Rolf was also logged on his radio pager, and friends told how he made no secret of the fact he was heading for a rendezvous with Rolf on the night he died. Whitaker's family are convinced he was killed by Tucker and Rolf and was written off by the police as a junkie who overdosed. Detectives could find no evidence to support the murder claims and at the inquest, Coroner David Malcolm Weir called the death most inexplicable. But the son discovered that the high concentrations of cocaine, ecstasy, cannabis and ketamine were found in Whitaker's body. Also traces of a devastating dose of lignocaine, a drug used as a cutting agent for cocaine. Eight micrograms of lignocaine in a milliliter of blood can kill. The level in Whitaker was three times that. Rolf was called as a witness at the inquest and was asked to explain his contacts with Whitaker. But a senior police source told The Sun 
He suffered a convenient bout of amnesia. He denied meeting Kevin and said he would only, had only spoke to him on the phone to inquire about his baby son. Whitaker's father, Bert, a retired car worker, said the statement by Miss Tate confirms all my suspicions. He told how his son was debt ridden and frightened. And he also added, Kevin did not abuse drugs and was not suicidal. The mother of Kevin's one-year-old son called the man a devoted dad. She also said he would have never killed himself. But then, just six months later, in the news of the world, an article came from Craig Rolf's mum, who admitted in Craig's part in the murders. The headline, News of the World Solves Poison Jab Murder Riddle. From the 25th of August, 1996. A distraught mother has revealed the chilling secret which a murdered son took to his grave. He'd got away with murder himself. Craig Rolf injected 27-year-old Kevin Whitaker with a fatal cocktail of poisonous drugs. He then dumped his body in a ditch. Police believed Whitaker was a junkie who had overdosed. But just days before Rolf, 26, was murdered himself, with two others all shot, police believe, in a drug feud, he sat down with his mum, Lorraine McRow, and pulled out his astonishing confession. The truth has to come out. I can't live with this inside me any longer, tormented 51-year-old Lorraine revealed to the news of the world. He may have been evil, but he was still my son. The tearful mum said that the motive for the killing was greed. He sat down at my kitchen table and told me. He said he'd given Kevin a lethal injection of drugs. Kevin had come to his house to drop off some cannabis. He had 60,000's worth of it on him and Craig stole it from him and then bumped him off. My son drugged him with an anaesthetic they use on horses. Then he gave him a lethal injection of drugs to the groin. Craig stuffed Kevin's body in a hired car and later dumped him in a ditch, Lorraine said. My son was a bad lad, I know, but it was difficult for me to say anything when he was alive. The car, which was used, was a Vauxhall Corsa hired in November 94 by a leasing company in Basel and Essex. Police are now checking the car for any forensic evidence. If it yields even a hair from Kevin Whittaker's head, it could solve the riddle of his death. High levels of cocaine, ecstasy, cannabis and a muscle paralysing drug called ketamine were found in Whittaker's body, which was dumped near the town. Whittaker had a one-year-old son with his girlfriend. His death baffled Dr Malcolm Weir, who recorded an open verdict. Rolf, who had a six-year-old daughter by girlfriend Donna Jaggers, died almost a year later. Gunmen opened fire on him and two others whilst they ambushed and their Range Rover in Essex countryside. Two men have been charged with the murders of the three men and are awaiting trial. At the time, detectives investigating the shootings believed the killings were a result of a drugs deal which turned sour. Rolf's father, Brian, was also murdered. He was bludgeoned to death in bed with a bowling alley skittle in 1969 as Lorraine laid next to him. Family friend John Kennedy was later jailed for life for that murder. The court heard how he'd lost his temper after hearing how Brian had been treating Lorraine. I was three months pregnant with Craig when his dad was murdered, Lorraine said. My family have been dogged with bad luck. So less than a year later, of the murders of Pat Tate, Tony Tuck and Craig Rolfe, an article comes out in August of 1996 with Craig's mum admitting that Craig admitted to him that he killed Kevin Whitaker. And not only that, they went into hospital and admitted it to Pat Tate. Now, the one part that sticks out of the whole death of Kevin Whitaker was the day he was murdered. The 17th of November, 1994. He was discovered on the 18th of November, but he was initially killed on the 17th of November, which happens to be the same day as Tony Tucker's birthday. So the day that Tony Tucker and Craig Rolfe drove Kevin Whitaker back to Romford, or at least part of the way, and then injected him in the back seat and dumped his body, all took place on Tony Tucker's birthday. And just over a year later, Craig Rolfe and Tony Tucker 
along with Pat Tate, were found murdered in a Range Rover. The question remains, was Kevin Whittaker's death the beginning of the downfall of all three?